Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's go through data science agent in Colab with the agents in many places. The task that we used to do has been shifted to another level because everywhere there is an agent, either for the exploratory analysis or to do the whole end-to-end -end applications, there is an agent for us to do. Similar to that, here is also an agent in the Google Colab itself. So as the title mentions here, data science agent in Colab, the future of data analysis with Gemini model. So what you need is just a data set and a good prompt that you want the agent to perform. That's it. Everything will be done by the agent. You can just watch how it is doing. The good part of this is also that you know how things are done by the agent and you can learn from that because it provides the code and all the different things. So you can just follow what it provides, right? It will be a short video, but I will show you how to get started into this. Let's get started. Okay, this is the blog post from Google. Here it says what is Google Colab and what is the agent. Here is how the agent works, right? It We need to go to the Colab, start fresh, add your data, and then describe your goals. Was the data science agent get to work, All right? That's it for different steps. But before that, let me open this Google Colab because not all of you might be familiar with Google Colab but you don't need to have any technical knowledge for this. This is just a place where you can go and write some code or do some exploratory analysis and so on. Colab is a hosted Jupyter notebook. It's kind of a notebook where there are different cells. You will see in the screen a little bit later. That requires no setup to use and provides free access to computing resources, including GPUs and TPUs. Colab is especially well suited to machine learning, data science and education, right? Here, there are also some examples provided if you need guidance. If you want me to create a whole video about Google Colab, let me know in the comment section. I will create a whole long form of video about Google Colab itself. Uh, but here, what we do is just click this new notebook, right? I will click the new notebook. Now you can see it is taking to the new browser here and you need to have an account. That's the need, right? As you can see here, I'm already logged. This is the notebook environment. You can give the name here on the top, whatever you want. I can say maybe data analysis agent, something like this. Here you can see start coding or generate with code or AI analysis files with Gemini. This is where you can already go through it. But in this video, what I'm going to do is go through this Gemini, show Gemini, right? If you click this one, you can see there is a new window popping up here. Now you can just go here and ask the questions. That's the different aspect because it's kind of a UI where you can ask the questions you want. But what I want to do, as I said before, we want a data set and a question, right? For the same simple example, I will say upload. Here I have downloaded the Stack Overflow CSV and the link is in the first section. As you can see, there are some of the examples here. So here, what is the benefits and so on, everything is mentioned here. I'll provide you the link of this blog post. You can see there are different data sets, but I took this Stack Overflow annual survey. I asked the same question. You can do whatever you want. I can just copy this. That's the prompt. And this is the data set. You need to download it. Take the CSV, right? Survey results. I can just go here and ask the question. You can ask any questions you want. And just hit this submit. That's it. Now it will first make a task for itself to do. Uh, we will just see that in the UI itself. Now you can see here, happy to help. Here is a set of tasks I can execute in your notebook to help answer your question. Data loading, data exploration, data wrangling, data analysis, data visualization, and the final task. These are the different tasks that agents decided it needs to do based on the data set and the prompt we provided. Feel free to send feedback and I will try to execute or update the plan accordingly. If you need, you can even enter a prompt and make some changes, what you need to do. Maybe you want to train a machine learning model out of it already and so on. But here we are not going to go through that. You can just write a prompt and it will execute the plan. It says, are you sure you want to continue? Your notebook will be connected to a new runtime and some notebook functionality will be disabled as your plan executes. This may take several minutes. You can stop the analysis at any time by clicking the stop button. The agent will have access to the internet and can interact with external APIs while executing your plan. You can read in the FAQs. If you are okay with that, then just click continue. Now you can see it is executing the plan and all the steps are being shown here. The first plan is preparing to execute the plan. Now it needs to plan, right? And it will do the thinking under the hood and do the task. 
And the good part here, what I noticed is also that if there is something wrong in the data set, it will try to fix it as it proceeds to the next step. So you can watch and do things. The good part of that is you know what sort of things you need to do. Let's say you are new to data analysis and now you know that, okay, with the prompt and the data set, what I need to do is I need to load the data. Maybe you don't know what libraries to use to load the data. So you can go there and see the example here and see, okay, this is how you can load the data and how to do the data exploration, how to do the data wrangling, all the different things you can follow when the Gemini does the task for us. As you can see, it's preparing to execute the plan, meaning the, all the necessary things that needs to be done is going under the hood. And once this is done, you can see in the left side here, it will populate the code and all the different tasks in the notebook. The good part of that is in Jupyter Notebooks or in the notebook itself, there will be the place to write the code and there will be place to write the documentation as we progress inside the code. Now you can see this is the task, right? And now this is the markdown. It is kind of a documentation. Visualize most popular programming language. That is the prompt we provided. Here is all the data you need. Survey results. That is what we uploaded here. Now you can see preparing the execution plan is done. It will even show on the right side what plan is executed and what is going in the next one. And on the left side, it will show us data loading. Here it says data loading, reasoning, load the data and display basic information to verify the loading process. Okay, now we know that there is pandas that is needed to load the data. Well, there are many tools that you can do to load the data, but it chooses the pandas here. And you can see the data loading and data exploration part is already completed. Now we can just go here. Okay, try, accept, and it is loading the data, encoding UTF-8, head, info. You can see here, this is the head. And this is the info, like five rows, 114 columns there are. And this is the info and even what was there, DB shape, what is the shape of the data? So as you can see here, 565437, meaning there are that many rows and 114 columns. We know by default it's there, right? And if you go down here, there is the data exploration. Explore the loaded data frame to identify the relevant columns for analysis. Right? The good part here is you can read the reasoning. It does the th reasoning itself and then it writes the code here and it output, output something here. And if you go down, here is the data wrangling part. Clean and prepare the data for analysis. First, you prepare the plan. You do the data loading. You do the data exploration. Now you need to do the data wrangling, meaning that do more cleaning and prepare the data for analysis because garbage in garbage out is the concept in machine learning right if you clean the data and make it ready for analysis you get better answers at the end here it says handle missing values of these and so on you can see it is saying fill now and it's doing the missing values and so on now you can see it did the response id zero unknown one all the different things right and if you scroll down the previous code block had a warning about change assignment i will fix meaning that if it sees there is some problem it will fix it and now you can see all the task is already done now we can go down and see okay this is fixed now data analysis the sub task reasoning group the language d of all the different things it does all that for us and now you can see javascript the count is this percentage is this and so on now we know that okay this is how the percentage count and language is there now we need to now create the create the visualization it says okay data visualizations and subtask visualize the popularity of the top 10 programming languages using a bar chart so we don't specify any chart here right it knows that it needs to go through the bar chart and now it went through here and now you can see the top programming languages javascript html css and it is shown here and now it is reasoning the previous attempt to generate the plot failed well it didn't fail actually but it thinks that it failed and and it goes there and it will do the reasoning here the previous data failed due to the key error because language is not in a column in top 10 now it is here right but i don't know under the hood it finds some error and now it shows here it's the same number of respondents and again it is showing here summary and after that it shows the summary that okay one q a the task implicitly asked for the most programming languages and then two data analysis key findings 
insights or next steps just imagine without this how much of the time that you need to invest in order to do this task well this might not be perfect although we get the answer here you might use different libraries and so on so what you can do now is just go to the agent and try instead of pandas maybe you want to use polars and other different libraries also that that does the thing for us if you know something about some tools or packages you can ask the agent to follow those patterns otherwise the data and one prompt get started the data analysis is done for you that's all i wanted to cover in this video just go here take your data execute it with the prompt and see what is there thanks for watching and see you in the next video